something huge down there. It flashed like crazy. Look yes. at this. <gasps> what the f is this? Did you see don't it's throw a ring? It. Yeah, it's a don't ring. throw it again. These murky waters are full of surprises. Today I would love to show you how the waters of Venice look like under a microscope. The canals are full of life and weird creatures. But first of all, welcome to Venice. To complete this mission, I brought my plankton net and my microscope, of course. I took samples in different locations all over the city, also during different times of the day. And here is what I found. Let's dive right in. The warm, shallow waters of the Venetian lagoon are filled with jellyfish. Some of them are very remarkable, like for example this one here. It compresses the water on its inside to propel itself forward, like a rocket ship. I was very happy about this find. I can't stop watching it. Then also rather bizarre ones I had never seen before. Also not in Japan or anywhere else I went. This is not a jellyfish, although the name would suggest otherwise. It is called a com jelly, a ctenophore. They are a rather special creature, also gelatinous. Com jellies are their own thing, let's say. What makes them especially surprising is that they have cilia, like a ciliate. Ctenophores have the biggest cilia in the animal kingdom. They are huge. They grow into structures that are visible to the human eye. A little later in this video, I will show you what I mean by this. The most surprising thing about these cilia is that when they break off, they're still able to move and they spiral in this dance of death, which you can see here. Apart from jellyfish, you can also see a lot of these ones here. They look so alien. This is a larva of a polychaete worm that is now just one quarter of a millimeter, but will grow into dozens of centimeter long worms, potentially. For me, it is quite hard to distinguish now the species of this polychaete worm. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Then of course, there are also these ones here. This is the frontal part of a veliger, which is a larva of a mussel or another shellfish. The water is also teeming with those, of course. There are mussels and other shellfish all over the place in Venice. I quite like this shot here. Then we slowly come to my favorite part. The waters are filled with all types of dinoflagellates. It is really remarkable how many there are. So many different species. Dinoflagellates are very interesting. Dinoflagellates are an important part of the food chain. Many of them hunt or do photosynthesis or do both. They are autotrophic and heterotrophic at the same time and can even be part of other creatures, like for example corals. Some dinoflagellates have evolved to become symbionts and provide energy to cnidarians, like jellyfish and the polyps of corals. The most remarkable dinoflagellate I found during my time in Venice is this one here. This is polycricos, which means several rings. Dinoflagellates have these rings made of cilia that helps them to move. It's a kind of a propeller that goes round their cell. And Polycricus consists of several of these rings. This is what the name means. Polycricus is amazing because it has a kind of a proto-eye. It can sense light very well. It has even a lens part 
in front of the eye spot. It is a bit hard to see, but it has these lens-shaped parts in there. But they should not be confused with another feature that this one has here. This dinoflagellate has nettle cells. It can attack other creatures with these nettles and defend itself, of course, also. Unfortunately, I have never seen it in action. I would really love to go back and to film it again and to probably see how it defends itself or how it potentially also attacks other creatures. I don't know what it eats, actually. And then we have this creature here, which I have no idea what it is. It just moves so fast that the sensor of the camera was unable to pick it up. Also for the naked eye, when I looked through the ocular of the microscope, I was unable to discern what it was. It's just too fast. Also slowing it down four or five times with the slow motion capability of this camera, I was unable to see what this thing is. And then we have the arch nemesis of dinoflagellates. This here is a radiolarian. It is an amoebate creature that floats freely in the water column. The needles that stick out are a kind of a skeleton where the amoeboid parts basically live on and move on. They are made from strontium carbonate or strontium sulfate. As you can see, the center of the cell is filled with all kinds of different prey that it caught, mostly dinoflagellates that probably, before they're being eaten, also have to do slave work. When light hits the cells contained in the radiolarian, they produce sugars through photosynthesis and feed the radiolarian on top. Then I also found my absolute favorite diatom, this one here. I'm not quite sure which species it is, but I've never seen anything like it. It is this bent ribbon. Absolutely amazing. And then we have this one here. This is a ciliate living in a kind of a bottle. It is a tintinid. Tintinids basically mean bell-shaped ciliates. The bottle they are creating to protect themselves is made from chitin or something similar and protects them quite well. When they get threatened or attacked, they retreat into this tun where they are safe. They seem also predominantly feed on dinoflagellates. Some of the internals of the cell seem to be smaller species of dinoflagellates that fell prey to this predator ciliate. But the biggest surprise that I had during this time in Venice is still to come. I went sampling during nighttime and all of a sudden I noticed some light flashes in my net. Oh yeah. It's flashing like crazy. Yeah. What is what is might it be? Yeah yeah. It's kind of like this. Really? There is something huge down there. First of all, I thought they are also dinoflagellates, bioluminescent bio uh, dinoflagellates, but they were just too big. These flashes were massive. I had never seen anything like it before. What is this? There, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a jellyfish. Yes, it's a jellyfish. It's a jellyfish. After some investigation of what had happened, I found out that this is actually Actenophore. It is a com jelly. When com jellies are exposed to mechanical stimuli, <gasps> wow! They send out a light pulse with a specific frequency. It's a kind of a bluish green light. I had never seen this before. It's, it was an absolute new thing to me. The only thing that I knew about com jellies is that they have a very unique way how they reflect and refract light from their cilia. When the light bounces off, you get this amazing rainbow effects all over these small cilia. But apart from that, I did not know that these creatures are able to be bioluminescent, to defend themselves. These com jellies actually seem to be extremely new to Venice. Before 2016, they had not been observed and they were somehow transported there by a cruise ship or a cargo ship, who knows. But they are not native to this lagoon. Now they start to grow explosively and you can find them really everywhere. 
I would really be curious how these com jelly swarms impact the ecology of this lagoon. The lagoon is anyway threatened by so many different things and it is a very in very dire conditions. Well, I hope you like this little excursion into the murky waters of Venice. Let me know what you think and please let me know if you are able to identify some of these species. I would be really grateful. It is always nice to learn about the names of some species I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Let's dig up some more dirt and let's stay curious. Bye bye.